All right, let me try and convince you another way. You're going to need to draw me a table of values, right? Now, we'll do it like so. It's going to have to be fairly large. You're going to need four rows on it. And I think if we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns, that should hopefully be enough to convince us, okay? So I'm going to go four rows and eight columns. This is a bit too small. Make your first column a bit wider than the others. Okay, now you've seen a table of values before. <coughs> Excuse me. You've drawn loads of tables of values before. But this is kind of a table of values on steroids, right? Because usually you just have the x, the inputs, and the y, or the f of x, which is the outputs, okay? And then you match them up and you get coordinates, okay? But here what I want to do is I don't just want to have one set of coordinates and one graph. I want to have a whole bunch of coordinates so I can compare what's going on, all right? Now, I'm going to give you a bit of a hand because we actually know a whole bunch of these values and I'm going to make it a little bit quicker for you so you don't have to machine these all out, okay? Let's think about our original, our original graph. Now, remember, you told me the roots of that original graph, x squared plus 5x plus 6, I've done it in black so it's a bit different from the others. The roots of it are negative 3, negative 2, okay? Negative 3, negative 2. What that means if, is if your x values are negative 3 and negative 2, if you stick them into here, you'll get zero. That's what it means for them to be the x-intercepts. So therefore, without any calculation, I'm just going to put those in. Okay, x equals zero, x equals zero. Sorry, f of x is equal to zero in both those cases. And if you like, you can go ahead, you can put in minus two in here, for instance. Uh, negative two is going to become four minus 10 plus six, and it cancels out, gives you zero. You can do the same with negative three, okay? So you've got a pair of the zeros there. Let's do an easy number, like negative one, okay? Negative one. If I put negative one into here, help me out. I'm gonna get one, take away five, which is negative four, plus six. Negative four plus six is two, right? Two. Now, because the parabolas are all symmetrical, right? And you can see these are kind of like the mid middle parts of the parabola. If this is two, then this is gonna be two as well. If you want, you can go ahead and you can test it out. You can stick negative four in there, uh, but I'm not gonna bother because I already did it about half an hour ago and you'll get that. You'll get this symmetry happening. Uh, all right, x equals zero. You also know this one. This is the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept of this original graph? It's six, right? You can see because this is zero, this is zero, you just get left with the six, right? And I'll just um, help you out. You get these two more values over here, okay? Now, what about the other two? What happens when we compare them, right? Well, let's have a look at, uh, let's have a look at f of x plus two first. That's what we did in the earliest, right? Uh, negative four, when you put in x equals negative four, you actually already know what's gonna happen when you put in x equals negative four for this graph because it's a, um, it's a root, right? So what will it be equal to if it's a root? It's a zero. Okay, you've already done that one. Um, okay, for the sake of making sure we know what the value is, let's try negative three. Now we're popping it into this guy here. Okay, we're popping it into here. So if I do negative three, okay, help me out. Negative three squared, that's nine. nine. This is gonna become minus 27, right? Because I'm negative. So nine, take away 27 is negative 18. Negative 18 plus 20. Sounds like two, right? Huh. One more time. Negative two, negative two. That's gonna become four minus 18. What's four take away 18? That's negative 14 plus 20. Negative 14 plus 20 is 
Huh. How much convincing do you need? That's going to be 12. That's going to be 20. That's an obvious one. Do you see why? Because 0, 0, 20. Uh, let's just quickly do this one. This is going to be 1 plus 9 plus 20, which is 30. And then this one's going to be 4 plus 18, 22 plus 20. That'll be 42. Okay. All right. So there are my numbers, right? But what's going on here, right? What's the difference between our original function and this guy? Have a look at the numbers. If you've got another color, you can see everything has been moved to the left. Right? You see that 6 went to the left 2 units, and this 2 went to the left 2 units, and this 0 went to the left 2 units, and it's the same with every other number that's on there. And if we had a wider table of values, you'd see them all shifting over to the left, translating to the left. Okay? So this is our to the left oh, function. Okay? All right, now, I'm not going to ask you to, um, to crunch out the numbers, but I think you can guess what's going to happen when we evaluate these numbers down here. Right, you get your calculator out, <coughs> excuse me, and you're going to get something like, uh, let's see, from memory, I think we're going to have zeros here, you're going to have 2, 6, 12, 2, 6. Right, you go ahead, you test your values to make sure that I'm not just making this up, okay? Um, but everything is doing the opposite, isn't it? Right? It's all moving to the do this one. To the right. Okay. So do you see what's happening here? Right? Let's draw a conclusion, and then I'm going to show you my last, my third way of trying to convince you that this is the case. Okay? Let me try and generalize. When I do this kind of thing, right? Let's let's take this as our example. F of x minus a, right? How is it different to our original f of x, right? F of x minus a is the same as f of x in every single way. Look, the graphs are identical, right? Except, except, it's been translated or shifted. Either of those words are fine. In fact, I'm going to write both. It's been translated or shifted. Now, in the examples that I gave you, concrete examples, um, I chose the number 2. But there's no reason I couldn't have chosen 3 or 4 or 5 or 500, right? It just would have gone further in either of those directions, right? So it's been translated how far? For these, it was two units. So if I've got the number A in there, whatever number A happens to be, it won't be two units, it'll be A units, right? Do you see that? Whatever value it is. Um, it's been shifted or translated A units, which direction? Okay, so if, if, I'm, if I've got, yeah, no, it's, it's almost opposite, isn't it? This is the counterintuitive thing that I was talking about, right? When you go x minus a, you go to the right. That's a bit weird because on here, negative seems to mean that way, to the left, right? But look, we've kind of like empirically proven it, almost by experimentation. Look, when you try these values out, it doesn't go to the left. It goes over here to the right. It's got no choice, okay? A units to the right. Now, the great thing about this, and I'm going to put a big box around this, the great thing about this is that it still works even in this case. I don't have to write a separate rule for this guy, right? Because I can rewrite this guy as f of x take away. Now, if I've got a plus 2 here, right, and I want to take away something which is the same as adding 2, what do you take away from something which is the same as adding? The answer is if you take away if you take away a negative number, right? Because we know double negatives they cancel, right? So what does this mean? What does this mean? This means f of x minus that is the same as f of x, but it's been translated. Now, <coughs> mark this. It's been translated negative two units to the right. So to the right's going that way, but I've gone negative two in the opposite direction, which we would usually say is to the left, okay? Does that make sense? When you see this x minus something, it means go that way. If you see x plus something, it means go 
that way, the opposite the way that you would think. Okay, for those of you who are learning to drive, it's a bit like when you're reversing, okay? And you turn the wheel the opposite way you're supposed to because that's the way the car is going to go, all right? And it's the same with these functions. 